welcome to another episode of Hot Comics. I'm Lysandra Vasquez. And I'm Brandi Younger. And today, we have a very exciting guest. <laughs> Morgan J. Morgan J. is a Los Angeles-based comedian and musician uh, who is in town. Yeah, and we were lucky enough to have him, and you guys are so welcome. He is the newest cast member of Wild and Out, and you're just going to get ready for a treat. Him. Yeah, and you're going to learn a lot, so. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to learn a lot. <laughs> Enjoy. Bye. Hey. What's up? Thank you so much for being Thanks here. For being, so thank excited. you, and thank yeah. you, and you, and you, and everybody here in Atlanta, Georgia, at the studio audience that's hanging yeah, out I mean, with us. Yeah, we do have Steve, our cameraman, back there. Yeah. So. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. What's up? Thanks for hitting me up to, to be on. I looked. I hope I don't look like tired and disheveled. But no, you look, you look great, and you yeah. brought us a hot topic. I did bring and a so hot topic. I'm very excited about it. Something I think about often. Mm-hmm. And what is it? Do what I bring up the topic? <laughs> yeah, it is. Do we think um, do we think monogamy is a viable uh, idea? A for people in our field of work, mm-hmm. for comics, and for B for the, the the new generation of of people who uh, seemingly have an abundance of of dating options online. Mm-hmm. That's, that's um, you point. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, do you think so? We had talked about this beforehand. She's all about (laughs) monogamy. What about you? You got the sabor. You got the flavor. (laughs) You got the the Latino flavor. Sabor. I think that it's It's different. It's tougher to do non-monogamy because you have to have better uh, sense of honesty with yourself and with other people. So you have to have like um, communication communication. is important. Yeah. 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 So. I don't think so. At least right now, I don't think so. But um, you know, that you c- not that you don't have to be honest with yourself and others, but that you have to. No, I, I just don't think non monog. I don't think monogamy is something I could do uh, mm-hmm. at the moment, considering where things are going with my career and mm-hmm. how much I have to travel. And I, literally this year, I've spent like half the year away from home. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, you know, you know, like. I'll be on. I'll be doing these shows. And <laughs> Boys gotta eat. And you know, peop- <laughs> the people are people showing up alone, coming at me at the show. You know what I mean? Shoot your shot. Sure. Yeah. I mean, basically, I was on. I like have a TikTok that went a little viral of me on stage of a girl that was like in the shot, and she was like, "I'm down if you're down." I saw it. You saw that one, I right? Did see it. She was hot. She was very attractive. She was, she did, was very attractive. So did, did I? You? No, I'm not gonna tell you anything about okay, that trip. Okay. No, I like you know. Yeah. Listen, respect. Uh, respectfully, you know, it's like I don't want to put all my business out there, but because <laughs> um, I do, I do have a, a girlfriend, yes. and um, mm-hmm. you know, we do have a an arrangement where it's kind of like a don't ask, don't tell policy, and mm-hmm. you know, it's kind. Of, I look at it as kind of like a license to cheat, but it is. it is. But 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 if you're gonna do it, like obviously, don't throw anything in somebody's face either. You know. But she sees the comments and stuff. She's like been to shows. She like sees the shit happen <laughs> in real time. Has there ever been a like a like a uh, an interesting or funny situation where like be- when you guys are with this dynamic that you have at all? You know, um, I don't know if it's a laughing matter. <laughs> no, because like because it's like because like so, no no because like no because because it does require a lot of communication <laughs> yeah. and. I feel like she does it because she loves me and I love her and mm-hmm. may- maybe she she's doing her own thing and I don't know about that stuff I don't know about mm-hmm. and that's fine I don't want to know about it um but I think like we got to communicate a lot about things and uh you know it it, it, it wor- oh God, I'm nervous I'm being a boring guest cuz no, no, but, but 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 I <laughs> it, I feel like it works if you if you are open about it and i mean we talk a little bit about this also like you know also there's people who have are your parents together well my dad died so same Bummer. dad dad's club let's go it was very it was yeah it's a club how long ago me, but how long ago in, uh three years ago oh okay yeah. uh, mine is yeah. uh when i was six Can I, how'd you so my trauma was a little bit more deep-seated than yours so i think i'm winning yeah, but like imagine growing up your whole life having your parents being loving and married and then, and then they die house. Yeah. Shattered, you know. uh, no, he had and cancer. My dad was always absent. So he had cancer. We were just yeah, colon us. cancer. And your dad wasn't around. Yeah. He wasn't around. And uh, he, uh, I was born into a secret family. It's a whole thing. I love uh, it. You were freaky deek. I feel <laughs> it. I feel your freaky deek energy. I got. But I got you. There's a lot of famous couples that do that have this kind of arrangement. Dolly Parton and her husband have been together thirty plus years, and they have a seemingly they say like a 
kind of like a don't ask, don't tell situation. I don't know if Dolly has actually slept with other people or not. She doesn't. She says she's like had flings and she flirts heavily and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I love her. So the Kurt Russell. Russell. Kurt Russell and Goldie yeah, Hawn. Hawn. Okay. Successful. I, so I'm pretty sure they've talked openly. Like she's talked openly. Like why would I be worried about like some twenty something coming at my husband or whatever? Yeah. You know, like she they yeah. they haven't built a level of trust mm-hmm. that we have. You know, what were we gonna say? I will say the flirting part of a non monogamous non monogamous relationship. I could I could be down for that like part. Pushing, like, like just pushing flirting, like allowing that to be okay. Yeah. So, but you would never act on it. You never do a little smoochy boot. Your little. A little kissy kiss, a little wacky smash. I can't, I can't answer yes or no because I've never been put in that situation before, yeah. or like mm-hmm. had that be a thing. I just think like you know, you're if you're only young and hot and youthful once in your life, and it's like use it or lose it, and you know we might die tomorrow. So I have a whole song about this, like fuck while you still can, <laughs> fuck now before it's too late, fuck now because it feels great, yeah. fuck for the children, <laughs> fuck for me, <laughs> fuck to build that family tree. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm for real though, I mean, it's because true. It's true. what else did I say in that song? Fuck, um, oh fuck for th- no. I go fuck for those who were gone too soon. Fuck for a woman's right to choose. Because I also I wrote it when they had overturned Roe v. Wade, so I was like, I gotta add that in there. Yeah, of course. Um, oh, if you've fucked enough uh, and you have some time, take some mushrooms and fuck your mind. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's good. So, so I think people should be, tr- you know. I should also say I'm not like, you know, going out of my way to hook up with yeah, people, people either. It's just if it happens. Yeah, yeah I'm not like arriving in, t- in a town so like and, has there and been being like DMing people, you know. Is there been like a time though that you've like, I don't know, DM or, or ran into it. two people and then mm-hmm. it was a threesome? Mm-hmm. I for sure have had threesomes, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was never like, oh yeah, so the th- I had my first threesome. And I talked about this on stage. Like, on a, I got drunk at a show, and I just like started going off about it because we just happened to be. This was also in Dallas, <laughs> and I talked about my first threesome. Dallas was wild. <laughs> Dallas was popping. Uh, that crowd was great. Anyway, so so I was in New York. I was like 24, and then um, I was at a show in Brooklyn, and there was this girl uh, who, I guess she was feeling me, but like I was kind of feeling her friend, and they also had a gay friend there with them. And there's a whole YouTube clip you can watch. It all. I'm gonna just re- rehash it here, but. Basically, the two girls stepped away for a second. I was talking to their gay friend, and I was like, man, I, I, I'm kind of feeling this other girl. And yeah. he was like, well, just ask them to have a threesome. <laughs> and I was like, can you do that? And he was like, yeah, just who gives a shit. And then I did, and then they were like, let us discuss. I straight up was like, just like, you know, I was like, hey, do you, do you guys want to have a threesome tonight? <laughs> and they're like, give us a second. And they said, yeah. And then one of the girls got us a cab ride from Brooklyn all the way to the Upper West Side. I don't know if you're familiar with New York. It's a long cab ride. It is a long cab ride. And I was, I was, yeah, si- I was sitting in the middle, and then they both started giving me head <laughs> and in the cab. And the shit was the dopest thing I ever did. This is why I love cabs that more than Ubers, because you can't get a rating. As a like yeah, and everybody's always like, what did the, you know, what did the, ca- did the cab driver say anything? Probably and I said, I said, if you want a tip, you know, you shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and you let this happen, <laughs> but no, no, but I didn't say that. But but uh, paper towels. but no, no, no. But but I finished in the cab in somebody. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. And <laughs> and um and uh, because I was my, it was my first threesome, so I was really nervous about you kn- performing at the actual main event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we got to the main event, and I c- I performed for about five or ten minutes, but then I I like was too overwhelmed. And that was that wasn't the first time that happened. And I think if you're a guy, you you shouldn't be afraid to like be open about like having anxiety during a sexual situation and then not being able to perform because it's like mostly mental. Mm-hmm. If a guy can't get it up, or you know, if you're the girl, you're clearly like not hot enough. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, I'm just because I've no. That's you're gonna uh, you're gonna like take that clip out and be that's like that's the, the cl- clip actually. I feel like that should go viral. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I say that as a joke because I think sometimes. Girls, if like you're not like if a guy's not performing well, they might the girl might internalize mm-hmm. that as like I yeah. am. Oh, it's me. No, because what happens is is like if it's not working, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's like a feedback loop. It just gets worse and worse mm-hmm. to the point where you know. One time I was at a sex party with my girlfriend, and I was upstairs with her and like two other girls, and I couldn't perform. I was like, t- I was too overwhelmed, and I I told her like, can we go somewhere else? And uh, 
like do our own thing. But then after we busted a nut, you know, so you're fine. then we were chilling and we had fun at the party and we went back, you know, party with a full gun. we yeah. don't, we don't, it's been a long time since we've done that, but, um, was it at the last full moon? Uh, no, it, was, it was quite a few years ago. I don't, I don't remember, but. And it, but yeah, no, those those are really interesting too. I mean, I don't have a lot to say about those, yeah, but I just remember one of the parties we were leaving. <laughs> oh my god, we were leaving a party. Can you hold this? Yeah. So I offer it. We were leaving a party, <laughs> and the guy goes, no, the the, the, the a guy and a girl were, were fighting on, on the way down, and the guy was like, "We said no penetration. <laughs> That's what we said. That's what we said." And I was like, "Oh my god, like what?" Like, you know, you're, <laughs> bro, you're at a sex party. People are going to sex. You know, like, what do you think's going to happen? Like One girl I spoke to at the party, the first party I went to, she was just sitting, like, in a corner, like, touching herself, like, watching everybody. And I was like, so where are you, f- like, having a conversation? Like, what are you, where are you from? Like, what are you, are you, like, what are you here for? She's like, I just like to watch. And she was just, you know. Do my thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of shocked at how many women came alone to the party. So. Maybe, maybe that's shout out to the, cr- the the guy who curated it. I don't know. <laughs> shout out to the promoter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no, but but that that was the first threesome, um, and I think like every time you add a person, you're kind of like learning how to have sex again. Mm. You know, yeah. and the main thing that changed. I'm 35 now, and the main thing that changed for me. I I don't know if I saw it on a podcast or an interview, but like if you're somebody. I feel like young people, or if you're a guy especially, you're, you're outcome focused. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like you just focus on the orgasm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you took away, you know, I think I heard somebody say, if you took away the orgasm out of the equation of a sexual experience, like then what would it be like? A really good question. Mm-hmm. Because then it becomes more about like really just hanging out and enjoying each other and mm-hmm. playing and just like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know, if you take the pressure away from like everyone having to get off and I'm not saying I don't do my absolute best <laughs> to get a woman off cause I, I really d- do what I can, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but you know, if you take that pressure away, it's like there's less anxiety. You'll, I feel like you'll perform better. You could always like take a snooze and, and come back and revisit it. You could try things out that may not end in a climax, but, you know, you tried something out and felt good and it, was, it brings you maybe closer together or some shit. I will yeah. say American culture, this is getting deep mm-hmm. for a minute, but like I would think sex education in America and like what we think sex is, we are results, stri- like results driven. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like you get awards, you get trophies, like you're always like going for the finish line. I think that transfer, this has nothing to do with anything, but no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no I, 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 I think that was what we're bred for. A long time ago, I was hooking up with a girl and she was like, I'm going to give you the best blowjob of your life. And proceeded to give me like the worst, weakest <laughs> ass blowjob ever. <laughs> you know? Far too high. Yeah. Don't say that. I go out there like a, you know, injured football player, like, coach, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> If we hit the if we hit the end zone, we get that touchdown. I'm gonna give it my all. I don't know. We might come back with the win, but we play we played our hardest out there. You know what I mean? And I feel like you know if you just try to do your best, it's gonna be fine. Yeah, you go out there and you give them everything you got. Would you psych yourself up for a sexual experience with something bigger than yourself, like the moon? Oh right, yeah. So I like that segue. <laughs> Solid segue. No, so what she's saying it's is, it's about the no, no, no. So, so, so most of my material is about dating. It is about relationships. It is about sex. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I do have the courage to speak about those so things. Great. You know, I stay away from politics and I don't know. I just never, I don't want to be like divisive and maybe that's cause, maybe cause I'm a coward. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no real, real talk. Um, I was doing this thing two years ago called the CBS Diversity Showcase. And the way it worked was every week we had to submit 10 to 12 ideas on a Wednesday. And then from, and this is all via Zoom. This is like during the pandemic, (laughs) right? So then, then we had to do, so we had to do that. And then they would pick four of those ideas and you'd have to pitch those on Friday to to more people, Mm -hmm. executives, people who work at CBS, right? Viacom and casting directors and things like that. So I wrote this song about the moon if it w- the moon was a peeping Tom and the moon was like looking at us like <laughs> jerking off and stuff, you know? <laughs> so I proceeded to sing a two and a half minute song 
on Zoom to let people that could really change the course of my career, who really <laughs> have power, you know? Yeah. And um, I finished it up and they said, okay, we're going to pass on that. <laughs> but thank you. And um, I do it in all, I do it in my sets now and it's, it's one of my favorite songs to do. It's, you know, and it's just like the moon's jerking off. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's got a tiny moon penis. They don't call it the Milky Way for nothing. <laughs> you know, all the stars are his cum. These are lines from the song. Um, shooting star, you know, he's got a... It goes, it goes, I got a tiny moon penis. You know what I mean? Look at you giggling like you all smoked weed beforehand. Uh, Stop. Sorry, son. But anyway, I added to my repertoire and um, <laughs> my repertoire, my very classy repertoire. Which includes that, um, you know, what else I, t I, t I mean, I tell jokes about work. I tell jokes about tiny dicks. We're going to get into that later. Or should that be the next thing we no, talk about? No, we, we can talk about talk containing about yourself. and the con Like, what are, the, what are the jobs that you've had? Oh, my God. So I've been, I had to, I worked for almost 10 years. I did, uh, I was a bicycle tour guide in New York. <laughs> that was one of my, what's funny about that? I could see you being a bicycle driver. Yeah, it was actually a really good <laughs> yeah, job. That, yeah, was, <laughs> that was honestly one of my... <laughs> you that was a really good job. Pre-city bike, right? Uh, Pre-city bike. That was one of my favorite <laughs> jobs that I ever had. That was super fun. We, I, I mean, it'd be like 20 miles of riding a day. Yes. It was no joke. It was like me and... Uh, but I wasn't a pedicab. It was me and like 20 people behind me. Yeah. Um, but while I was in New York, I also worked at the container store which I worked in the stock room. I also did customer service and like, you know, working at that, like, have you guys have odd jobs? Like what kind of yeah. jobs have you, are you still having, you still working? What are you doing? I'm in corporate. Corporate? Yeah. What Advertise kind of job? Advertising sales. Mm -hmm. I've had a bunch of, um, I, I, LA you, actor yeah, too, doing so I've had yeah, all so you the got jobs, of personal assistant and all the things. Yeah, so the container store, like, that was a good job, but the customer service was really, I mean, people are calling in with the dumbest questions, like literally like, you know, what can I put in this? Like, Whatever the fuck you want, bro. <laughs> what literally anything. Literally write down all your thoughts. <laughs> put them inside. Never show them to anybody. Get the. F you know what I mean? Like, does this fit in that? Yeah, it does. The measurements are there. Get the. You know, like that. That and then the Apple Store was. That was a good job too because of the discounts. But I quit because they were gonna, they were gonna fire me because they found out I was getting everybody discounts like <laughs> anybody if you walked in. That's the other point of a non-monogamous relationship. The yeah. Apple discounts. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Friends I was giving and family. Friends and family. I was giving you everybody were loyal discounts. To your girlfriend, the Apple Store. Yeah, and then I just give. But the thing is, all the <laughs> shit's super expensive, <laughs> and I was doing it for like two or three years, and then one of my coworkers, because you know, there's people who, and especially now, it's kind of hard to like really be locked into a job that kind of doesn't fulfill you. fulfill you and also mm -hmm. like while the world burns we're out here like people are working in like a startup making an app for whatever the fuck mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. and it's kind of like hard to be engaged in a job when you're literally seeing stuff in real time happening yeah. so you know there's people who drink the kool-aid and there's people who make the kool-aid <laughs> and this person made the kool-aid for sure <laughs> and we were we were so after my shift, she came up to me and was like, did you just give those people a discount? And I was like, yeah, Lisa, I did. <laughs> and um, she was like, why? And I was like, because this shit is expensive. <laughs> and if you're mad about this, I've been stealing for years. <laughs> because none of this fucking matters, Lisa. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't. <laughs> and then and then like two days later, I, ca I had a meeting with a manager and they were like, we have to like, can you walk us through your last transactions? And I was just like... Well, you know, I'm just trying to surprise and delight customers, you know, <laughs> just using the jargon back at them, you know, <laughs> and then they're like, why, why didn't you come to a manager? And I'm like, well, because, uh, you know, I, you guys seem like you're busy and w you give us our autonomy, which we really appreciate. And I'm just trying to make anyway, week later, I had another meeting with an, a higher up manager and sh she was actually really chill about it. She was like, well, I just want you to know, like, they're going to investigate like all your transactions and they're going to ask you like these questions. And then the minute I got out of that meeting, I just put in my two weeks and I quit. And a really funny thing is that the Apple store, anytime it's your last day, they, everybody claps for you on the way out. Nobody clapped for me <laughs> because I, I worked there for six years and I speak three languages 
I, they always were like, why don't you like try to be a manager? Why don't you like do this or that? Like you're good at your job. You're like really friendly. And I was like, cause I'm, no, I'm doing comedy. It's like what I'm doing, you know? And, um, so the managers just knew like I never like played the game there. Mm-hmm. So I, they knew I didn't give a shit. So nobody clapped for me. And they, and they also knew like I was giving everybody discounts or like this person is clearly doing their tomfoolery and we're not, we're not going to support that. And I never understood it. And there's people who still work there to this day who, you know, they see me shining. <laughs> they see me shining. Now. That's right. <laughs> oh, I'm so p- like posting on a Facebook Morgan, I'm so proud of you. Like, but you never showed up to a show. I invited everybody to shows <laughs> at the sto- at the store, and no- nobody showed up. Do you think if you worked at Microsoft, they would have showed up? Fuck Microsoft, <laughs> and fuck WebEx, whatever that Microsoft <laughs> Teams bullshit is. Anytime I got to do a, a corporate, low key, I'm down as- for a sponsorship and happy to write a jingle. <laughs> do it, book them. Yeah. Microsoft. <laughs> WebEx, I don't know. <laughs> but no, no. Sometimes I have to do, I do a lot of corporate Zoom events. Zoom, there's there's Amazon Chime, there's Zoom, there is uh, Ring Central, there is WebEx, mm-hmm. there is Teams, what, Teams Google Meet. Google Meet. Zoom. Z- so there's all, it's like we, we already circled back, you know what I mean? Skype, yeah. uh, but I, fi- I find Microsoft Teams to be, you know, they're one of the, the the toughest ones to navigate and see everybody and but we're get, we're getting off topic here where, where are we going with Wait. it when you're when you're trying to hook up with somebody and you're communicating do you communicate you talk about size is that something that's a part of the conversation yeah so i you know there's like i think like some girls they you know they'll get like fake titties or like a fake mm-hmm. ass and they could wear like a bodysuit and, and show that shit off online and stuff but if you're a guy walking around with, you know, an above average piece, <laughs> you can't really go around like talking about it sure. without <laughs> coming off like as a piece of shit. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be real with you. I never send an unsolicited dick pic, but, you know, I will try to steer the conversation towards that because like that, I feel like it's one of my best assets. <laughs> and because otherwise I'm like a skinny dude who looks like Ratatouille. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can you guys usually have big dicks? Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah, 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 I'm a Brazilian Italian dude, and mm-hmm. um, yeah. I try to like, you know. So I wanted to write a song where I could somehow reference it without making it about me. So I wrote the song about tiny dicks, mm-hmm. and <laughs> and I, it was like about positive b- body positivity, and like if you have a tiny dick, you could use your tongue, you could use your finger, you might have to double up, triple up, <laughs> use a whole fist, you know. <laughs> Oh, one of the what is one of the uh, the the best? I think the best line is uh, it's like if she says and if she says you you've got the perfect size that means she's probably had bigger guys, but she really really likes you. <laughs> she really really likes you, and sometimes it's just too big and i know this from experience and i'm not saying that the flex but sometimes it's hard when we have sex and she's like ow that hurts and that angle doesn't work and i'm nervous i don't know if i can do this and it's like si se puede (laughs) yes you can Believe in yourself. Yes, you can. <laughs> Believe in yourself. And they can. <laughs> they can. Yeah, good. And you can. Yeah, that's good. But the point be, and then I go at the end of the song, I'm like, it, and if you got a tiny dick, it's okay, my guy. And if you don't <laughs> believe me, let's just ask these girls in the seat right here. <laughs> Do you think that size matters? <laughs> be honest. Be honest. I think. You see what she's saying? <laughs> she's saying that. She's saying that sometimes it can be too big. That's what you're saying, right? Exactly what I'm saying. It can just be too. So big. having a tiny penis is okay, right? Uh-huh. Tell all the tiny dick kings out there. It's totally fine. <laughs> Good. Because people were stressing, so we do that live in the crowd. We do that live in the. Cr- I did it for the first time last night, and it like went over so well. So that's the song, and I get to like kind of work in there that I can have like an above average penis, and like it's uh, you know, <laughs> I I joke all the time like, 
like if somebody leaked a, a photo, it would only help my career. You know what I mean? Some Ray J. Kim K. shit. <laughs> Was it I'm gonna be. Just I'm my whole career. This this podcast down the road will either elevate my career or absolutely destroy it. And yeah. either way, we're here for it. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's Hollywood, baby. Would you consider leaking a nude or what What do you consider a red flag? In a Red flag, yeah. So, you know, no, obviously, like, I'm, I have a song about this. Red flag is like, no bed frame. <laughs> uh, dirty sheets. Like, I've hooked up with a girl before and there was like a period stain. Yeah on her bed and yes I still did it because like I'm a guy and I'm <laughs> I'm a like monster I'm a you know what I mean <laughs> she was like I don't worry it's just a period stain I'm like oh cool all right um because it was like red it was like you know yeah like <laughs> that and you yeah. know I'm like a really I'm like a clean person like I, I clean my sheets for the most part like every 10 days yeah, 10 day. to 12 yeah. days you yeah. know but I hear about people who will have sheets on for a month and I'm like ain't no way top sheet mm -hmm. What do you mean top sheet? Like comforter, top sheet. I actually only sleep with the, the, the fitted sheet and a blanket. Hmm. I don't like the extra. extra I don't, yeah, I don't do the extra I just do under the blanket. I don't see the point. I, agree. I will not use a duvet cover. I think they're confusing and unnecessary. <laughs> I think they they're, I think they're yeah. like, you know, that's, who has a joke about this? Duvet covers are people in, for people in relationships because it's like you need two people to put it like together. <laughs> I know there is a way to do it like that's easy yeah, without it, yeah. but. Yeah. Um, that, you know, uh, dirty fingernails, like unusually dirty fingernails, yeah. uh, like if you're not, really like right if you're not like yeah, taking like care of your, your, you know, cleanliness yeah. and stuff like that. Um, uh, but I've always been like a relatively clean person for the most part. Although I was at brunch today and one of my coworkers was like, I never, nobody's ever said this to me. And she was like, mm -hmm. literally right before I came here, she goes, you got to clean your, your ear. Your ear is fucking dirty. <gasps> you got like a lot of earwax in there. I was like. What do you, what do you, how deep are you looking into my <laughs> ear? How can she see that far? You know what I'm saying? I just like the camera Yeah. And I was like, sh and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was all like it. She's like, no, I'm telling you as a friend, like if you had food in your teeth, I'd tell you. But, <laughs> That's an interesting but, um, so what else is a red flag? Oh, well in the song, I say things like if they're friends with all their exes, if they were at the, if they were like, if you asked them what they were doing on January 6, 2021, <laughs> and they were like, I was just hanging in DC with some friends. I'm like, well, please elaborate. What does that mean? <laughs> what were you doing? It's like, oh, we were storming the Capitol. Okay, great. Um, that's a red flag for me. Pull the lyrics out, but I will. Because you guys have to know, I didn't bring my guitar with me. And I'm sorry, but sometimes I don't. You guys also, if you, if the people who ask you to be on the podcast do not tell me to bring the guitar, I won't. I said that we had a hookup for the guitar. You said you had a hookup. You didn't say you didn't have a good. You said if you want to plug in, I didn't know what that meant. Did you really not know what that meant? I knew what it meant, and I and I chose not to bring the guitar. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I completely defied you, and um. But uh, but you're also getting. <laughs> But you're also getting, you know, like a referential. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, some of these songs. Oh, when they say all of their exes are crazy and it's like, no, bitch, you're the crazy one. Mm -hmm. Ain't no way. Yeah. yeah. When you go to their bathroom and you look for a towel and they don't have one. Ooh, any. Like out? Just you don't see any. Yeah. <laughs> when they have a live, laugh, love tattoo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, obviously, when they're mean to the waiter. Um, when they spent the last hour talking about cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that goes both ways. Yeah. When you ask them what kind of music they like, and they're like, I don't really like music. And honestly, that's the weirdest one for me. <laughs> you know? Have you had someone say that? Yeah. Mm. It was a long time ago. I went on this Tinder date. This was like early on when I got to L.A. And this, this girl was like, I forgot what her name was. Uh, like we matched, and but I forgot what her name was. And uh, she's like, guess guess what my name is i'm like i don't know i can you just tell me i feel this is making things weird yeah. she's like it rhymes with bacon and i'm like that's even weird i don't <laughs> even know so her name was yeah. her name was lakin okay and then um we were in the car and she just like i just i was surprised we even hooked up because i knew this was going there no because <laughs> because <laughs> she seemed so uninterested and annoyed and then she was like i was like are we gonna like I was like, are we? <laughs> Do you want to? <laughs> Do you like 
And I, she was like, yeah. I was like, all right, fuck. So, um, <laughs> and that's how every one of my stories end. <laughs> all right, sure, I guess. Sure, let's go up against um, no, but there, there are, <laughs> what are your red, what, do you guys have red flags? Of course. A lot what of are some? A lot of what you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Most of what you mentioned, doesn't like dogs, is a red flag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What else? Just because I have one. Yeah. Yeah, what else? Yeah, what's that? Y- we never really talked about, because you just got, I don't want to put your shit out there, but you just got out of an eight-year thing. Well, not just, I mean, mm-hmm. it's been like four or five years. I mean, and they just got married. They did just get married. And have you been out in these streets hooking up or Actually, no? Actually, yeah. When's it's the last time you hooked up? Uh, the night he got married, it was great. It was two weeks ago. How was it? Great. Who was he? I can't. I can't. You can't, can't disclose can't, that can't information. Disclose. Comedian? It's huh? No. Comedian? Not a comedian, but not a, comedian. a lot it's of incriminating information. Coworker. Say, coworker. So coworker. Like no. Um, Nick Cannon. I've hooked up with plenty of coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nick Cannon. Uh, I did meet Nick Cannon. Yeah, he's really nice. Yeah, he's I'd be fine with he's that. He's really nice, yeah. That'd be great. Um, no, I feel like you'll appreciate this. So I am a late bloomer, like sexually, yeah. so I was in that long relationship. I could right? feel your sexuality. Yeah, now, because I'm learning about it, I bought my first writer this year. Fantastic. Yeah, it's just been a whole journey. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Well, Shocked. Mm-hmm. We did yeah. a lot of missionary for a long time. A lot of eye contact, a lot of I love you. And oh, no, no, just like a lot of boring. Just a lot of getting a lot of, through it. A lot of getting through it. He was yeah. Jewish, so that's what I thought I should do, so mm. my mom was really happy about it. Um, but God, it's just such a shame. Like there's people out there just like having bad sex. And, like, I know. Mm-hmm. Never I didn't know until I knew though. So now that I know this yeah. whole year has just been about like figuring out what that means. Yeah. Let's talk about your comic hottie. So we're, uh, this is the part of the conversation <laughs> <laughs> where we, uh, where we're the part of the podcast where we ask our hot comic, uh, to shout out a comic that is younger them in comedy years that they would like to shine a spotlight on. Yeah. I was, uh, immediately Mary Romeo came to mind. She's an LA comic. I think she's been doing it for about six years. And you know what I like about her? She's funny and she works really hard. You know, she is out just about every night. And like, there are people that say they do comedy, but they don't hit the, they don't hit it. Like some people hit it. And she literally like took herself on a tour of America doing shows anywhere. She asks to be, on any show she mm-hmm. can like mm-hmm. she really like fucking goes for it yeah. and um she produces uh one of the best shows in la okay. and um now we just started working together to produce a show when i'm in town um in venice which we've done two of them and they were like amazing it. it's a fucking great venue and so I, I i think she's great and um i think she'll be killing it and she already is but i think she'll like be on that you know like Whitney Cummings level at some point, right. you know, Definitely. whether it takes six years, 20 years, uh, but I, she's still, she'll, she'll end up there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So oh, great. Check her out. Check her out. Uh, and that's it. That's all. I shared so much on. Yeah. That I but what did you say? What did you say in the text? <laughs> yeah. What'd you say in the text? All right. We'll Bye. see you guys next time. Bye. 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 See, what did I say? We, we, we told you that we, we were going to learn you. a lot. That is, um, he's fun. <laughs> He's fun. He's fun. <laughs> All right. Wow. So uh, that was, and we're, we're both like, oof. okay. So Morgan J, uh, you can find him at Morgan J on the Instagram. Oh, you can says. find all of his information. You can mm-hmm. find where he's touring, where he's going, uh, what shows he's on, all that information. That's going to be your best bet. He just did a Don't Talk Comedy special. Yeah. Uh, go check that out. Uh, and his comedy hottie is Mary Romeo. You should go check her out mm-hmm. at, on Instagram. We'll link it in the show notes. Yeah. All of her stuff is going to be in great. the show notes. And they're both LA based. Yeah. So if you're in that area over there, look them up if they're over there. But you can do all that. I'm sorry. I'm just flustered by yeah. that whole. There was just so many things. So many things. You know us by now. You, well, We're now nice. you do. If you didn't before. Well, you know her. <laughs> I'm not revealing that. <laughs> revealing that kind of stuff. Uh, oh. That's it one day. We'll get one mm-hmm. day. Maybe. I'm Fort Knox. You can't get that out of me. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Blushing. I'm. I can't. I cannot. He's still here. So we normally, normally we record this when people leave, but he's still here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So well. Anyway. So th- thanks for checking out the episode. Uh, subscribe, comment your favorite Touch part. All the things. Um. <laughs> 
this is a very different a time different. to be alive slide different. into any one of our dms you can uh, you can sli- actually you can slide into can. any one of our dms yeah what will happen no, we can't guarantee anything but we can well <clears throat> what we're, pro- we're what opening it now oh a threesome just kidding that's not gonna happen just to fucking love that yeah youtube's yeah that's the only clip that's gonna get pulled on YouTube. anyway oh, that, oh yeah <laughs> they'd love to see it they'd love, love to see it imagine it well, anyway all right well you're welcome <laughs> i'm lisandra vasquez and i'm brandy younger thanks bye. we'll see you next time bye